Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 80021, Monkey Kid's Lion Guardian from the LEGO Monkey Kid theme. This set contains 774 pieces, 5 minifigures, and will retail for $79.99 in the US. This set was sent to me early by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I just did early reviews of all 5 of the upcoming March 2021 Ninjago sets, and now I'm doing reviews of all 7 of the upcoming March 2021 Monkey Kid sets. So by liking the video, you'll help support the channel, by subscribing to the channel, you'll see all those videos in your subscription feed as soon as they're posted. But with all that out of the way, let's get on to the review. So to start, here is the main build of the set, the Monkey Kid's Lion Guardian. This guy is a ton of fun, I absolutely love the colors on him. I'm used to collecting Ninjago, and while Ninjago is like goofy and wacky, it's not usually this goofy and wacky. There's so many different colors, so many different shapes all over this guy, it's a ton of fun. Genuinely just really unique and cool. The design and colors of this guy reminds me a lot of like the costumes used in like dragon dances in like Chinese New Year festivals. I'm not super educated on them so I'm speaking to something like I have no like personal connection to. However when someone mentions like a Chinese New Year festival the first thing I think of is those like elaborate dragon costumes. And while this is a lion and not a dragon he looks a lot like them. I like these like little tentacle pieces used all throughout and recognize these as the Oni horns from Ninjago but I think these are pieces before then. Not sure exactly what they used to represent back then but get them in like a variety of colors here both like this uh, bright orange and in red. You can see there's these little tassels hanging off. You can see there's these really cool looking flags up here with Monkey Kid's little symbol on them. The tail in the back here uses the tentacles in orange and then a bunch of red to make it look like they're sort of like flowing in the air. They're coming off the back of each leg too. There's just so much cool detail out of this guy just makes him a ton of fun. There's a play feature in the back here which I'll show you up close in a moment but you can push back on this area right here and it'll open and close his mouth. The head has no articulation by itself. This is the only articulation it has at the mouth right here. But I like how it allows you to give the lion some different expressions. You can have him like shouting in a battle mode, or you can have him just sort of standing around with his mouth closed. He has articulation on both his front and back legs. The front legs are significantly bigger though, so you can't really have one of those up in the air. You can see you can pick the back ones up, turn them out, and like he could still stand up perfectly fine. You can do like whatever kind of acrobatics you want with the back legs. But if you try to move the front legs up and then you let go, he just sort of topples over. Unfortunately, he is a bit restricted in the poses you can get him in. You can't really have him like in the middle of walking with like one leg up and one leg back because the balance just isn't there. He topples over really easily. But one cool pose you can get him into is this right here where he's got like his front legs spread out like he's getting ready to attack or getting ready to play. And I like this one a lot. It's very like cat-like. And since this is like a giant line, I think it fits him well. But I think that's about all I got to show you from this far away. So I'm going to pick the camera up, move you in a little closer so you guys can see the more intricate details. Here's a look at the Lion Guardian's face up close. You can see that's him with his mouth open. And then here he is with his mouth closed. Something interesting is his eyes are like these printed ball pieces and they have like this little mechanical eye print on them. Here's what those look like fully removed if you're curious. They're quite interesting. I'm kind of surprised they did this. Obviously it makes sense that it'd be a print and not a sticker. You can't really put a sticker on a rounded piece like this. However, it's just interesting to me. Like I didn't expect this, but it works really well and it looks good on this guy. The eyes can also be moved around so you can have them like looking in all sorts of different directions. Like you can have them look back like this or down like this. And you can do that on both sides. This set interestingly uses like a combination of both pearl gold and like this painted gold color. Before the sort of monkey kid sets, I've never really seen this painted gold color before, but I'm sure it's existent. It's just not commonly used in Ninjago. But I just found it interesting that they use both kinds of golds here and they're like a nice complement to one another. You can see there's three wheel pieces on each side here. I think these ones are sort of supposed to be the lion's ears, but these ones in the back are supposed to like maybe represent its mane, but it also feels like very mechanical, so it could be like exhaust pipes, because I assume this is supposed to be a robotic lion. He's got two of those like big red tentacles on his nose right here. They cover up his eyes a little bit which is a bit unfortunate but but for most angles it still looks all right. His nose is really cute. It's made up of like two different heart pieces in like this bluish greenish color. It's like a nice splash of color and it's a cool use of that part. I like that a lot. You can see in his mouth down here he has lots of like gold teeth a mixture of like the classic Lego tooth pieces and like the newer like Mixels teeth pieces. Well I guess it's not new nowadays but it's new to me because that wasn't a piece when I was a kid. Moving to his back you can see there's more of these like red tentacle pieces. They're covering up like this wheel area and it goes onto this little uh, saddle right here for Monkey Kid to sit. Immediately above it, there's two of these flags. These flags are incredibly interesting. They're on like this gold foil thing. Like it's a metallic gold flag piece. I've never seen anything like it from Lego before. And you get two of them here. They're really shiny. They look really cool. I'm actually a huge fan of how these look and I would love to see them use these more often. Because yeah, they look absolutely great. I love the colors on them. Like all the colors are really vibrant. I love the little like Monkey Kid logo and everything. It's super cute. They also have like the Ninjago gold tassels on the top. Here's the little seat for Monkey Kid right here. You can have him stand atop the line just like that, or have him sit if you prefer. 
Here's the mouth mechanism from the back. You pull back to open the mouth, you push forward to close the mouth. And then out the back, there's a little tail. The tail itself isn't great, but I love all the little tentacles coming off of it. It's just this area right here looks a little awkward. I like the use of the battle droid body right here in red. Like, I, it's very rare I see that in different colors, so that's really cool to get. And then just has, like, the robot arms coming off of it with more of, like, the red tentacles. The unfortunate thing about this, it's a little back heavy. Like, if I just leave it be, it will slowly start to fall. There it goes, yeah. <laughs> Which is a bit unfortunate, but even like after it's fallen, it still looks quite good, so that doesn't bother me all too much. Underneath, you can see there's a little like silver bar piece right here. Moving down, you can see the lion has like these pearl gold like uh, nails right here, and then there's like a little bit of uh, like painted gold shielding right here. There's a little stickered slope piece right here. You can see there's a little tooth coming out the back just for some more like stability. A little Nexonite shield out the front here with another sticker on it. You can see there's another painted gold piece right here with some more texture. There's this piece from Ninjago which was introduced to Master of the Mountain. There's a little, like textured like armor bit right here that I think this fits really well and then that covers up the area where this little tentacle is connected. The, the feet actually have a surprising range of motion. They can go forward and they can go back like really far. And of course they could go side to side like 90 degrees like most uh, mech feet can. This is actually really impressive and I wish more mechs had feet like this because yeah this is a pretty nice range of motion. Looking at the back leg it's much smaller but quite similar. You can see there's a little Nexonite shield here for a little bit of texturing. There's the same like similar stickered piece right here. It's got the pearl gold toes at the front and it's got a very similar looking foot though it doesn't have that like painted gold shield right there. And once again pretty good range of motion on this guy. You can go forward and back like quite a bit and obviously side to side 90 degrees. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked by this guy's range of motion. Unfortunately, his weight does like limit him a little bit in like the poses he can get into, but he definitely has like the uh, ability to move, which is really impressive, honestly. Here's a look at the legs on the other side. They're identical, just mirrored, so anything I said about the other side is true for this side as well. And then finally, with the line guarding itself, I want to take a look at these like little shoulder turrets right here. They have like these printed disc pieces on top of them, which are really nice pieces. Like honestly, these are really useful. You get two of them here. They're both identical to each other, but they both look like really nice. It has just like this gold printing around it and then a couple of scratches in the middle. You can see there's little tassels on the side. There's this wheel out the back. And if you push back on this wheel right here, that front bit will open up. And once it's opened up, you can see there's some turrets on the inside. These two are purely imaginary. The ones in the middle, they're just like little orange bullets that are meant to represent, hey, this could shoot something. But this one right here is a spring-loaded shooter. Same thing on the other side. You can push back on the wheel in the back or you can just manually open up the compartment. And then when you're ready, just push back on the spring-loaded shooter. And it shoots out just like that. And if you're curious, if you try to do that with a cover up, it sometimes works still. <laughs> it gets a little caught up though and does not fly with as much force and sometimes it just doesn't come out at all. But that's about it for the line guardian, so let's move on to the side builds. So here's the first side build in the set. It's the Ant Gravity Arcade, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this is my favorite part of the set. The line is cool, don't get me wrong, but from collecting the Jigo, I have tons of like creatures and like mechs. And while this one is definitely unique and unlike any other one I'd ever had, this is so much cooler. <laughs> it's quite simple, but oh my goodness, do I love it. So there's two games in this arcade. This one on the left side is like a Dance Dance Revolution type thing. This one's purely imaginary. You can see there's like a little DDR pad right there for minifigures to step on. And then it shows like little arrows coming down the screen and like you have to hit the right ones at the right time. It's just the high score and everything. Such a fun idea and I can't believe we've never gotten it in Lego before, or at least I haven't. Maybe they've done it before, but still I'm really happy to get it here and it looks great. I also like these little stickered pieces on these trans blue uh, pieces in the back. This looks surprisingly good. Normally I'm not a fan of stickers, but those look good. Then you have the main entrance right here. It has a little sticker piece that says Ant Gravity, some more stickered blue pieces right there, and those look great as well. But the best part of this is this right here. This is a claw machine. I loved claw machines as a kid. I love claw machines now, but this is such a perfect way to translate it into Lego. I'm generally so impressed at how they did this. To start off, we'll look at the exterior. You can see there's like these trans blue pieces in the back that have these same stickers as the ones that were around the DDR uh, like device. There's some stickers on the side that just show, hey, this is a claw game. And then on the other side, it's pretty much the same thing. Out the front, it's got this little face with its like tongue sticking out and two eyes and then like little ears at the top. I think that's pretty cute. And then at the top, there's a little hole. This is where you load in the prizes for the game. They give you like these little trophies in the set. It comes with three gold ones, but you can very easily put like your own colors in there if you have extras. And I have extras from like the Ninjago City and everything, so I'll definitely be putting other colors in here after I've done the review because I think that's like a lot more fun. But anyway, just drop it in right here. And you see that there's like this little Technic gear on the back. The Technic gear, if you spin it, can like control the claw on the inside. You can also like pull it in and like move it out a little bit just to have like a wider range of motion. And your goal is essentially just to like hit these toys into the hole. And it can be quite difficult sometimes. You don't actually grab it like you would in an actual claw machine. You're supposed to like slide it over, and it's really fun here. That that might have been one. All right, I'm close. <laughs> Oh, oh, I got two. Look at that. I got two. <laughs> and wow, just what a fun idea for a build. Just genuinely, that's that's so good. That's my favorite part of this $80 set is this tiny little build right here. It's just so much fun. Like, how could you not love this? 
So yeah, you can have a minifigure like one run of these and take them home, or you can just reload it by dropping it back in the top. And as I said, this only comes with three, but there's room for a lot more, and you can put in like different colors and everything to create variation. Genuinely just so much fun, super creative. I applaud the designer who did this. This is incredible. <laughs> Before I finish off this part of the review, I want to show you what the outside of this area looks like. It's got a little sign right here that says Ant Gravity, same one that's on the inside. It's also a stickered piece. There's a nice little like roof right here with these curved pieces. There's a little like flag right here with some text that I assume is Chinese because Monkey Kid is Chinese inspired, but I cannot read it. So if anybody knows what it says, please let me know in the comments. This one right here, I'm not sure what it's supposed to represent. It looks like maybe some spider stuff related to the Spider Queen. And then the other side has a sticker of Monkey Kid and the cat. Oh, and if you couldn't tell, this can also fold up really easily. Just close it in like that like that and it's more like cube shaped now so it looks more like an actual building but you can open it up to actually play inside this is so cool this is my favorite part of the set if this was like released on its own for ten dollars or something i would definitely buy it like this is genuinely awesome the next side building the set are these like walking legs for the spider queen these are really interesting i think they look really cool but they're kind of pointless First, here's how they look with her on it, if you guys want to see how that looks. Like, there she is on top of it, but I'm going to remove her in a moment so you guys can just take a look at the build. And, of course, we'll take a look at her when we take a look at the minifigures. But, yeah, here's the giant spider legs from the front. I think this is a really creative design because it's got these, like, two, like, bright red eyes right here. And it looks like a spider, right? It's got six legs back here. Probably should be eight. But then it's got these two little, like, pincers up front. And, like, yeah, it looks like a spider. I look at this and I see a spider. But the funny part is those eyes are actually spring-loaded shooters. <laughs> So this is going to be shot out and removed. Originally, I thought it was a bit weird that they used red because I'm like, oh, purple's more her color. And they used purple in this Ninjago wave, so why not use purple here? But now it makes sense to me because it's supposed to be the eyes of the spider. That's actually really cute. The reason I said this is a little pointless, though, is because the legs don't actually raise her in the air at all. Like, you can pick this up and have it, like, uh, in the air like that. However, when the spider queen's on top of it, it just becomes too top-heavy and it topples over, so the bottom of the spider ends up touching the bottom of the ground anyway. But you know what, I don't really think that's a big deal, because she still is, like, raised up by the spider itself like this. And the spider is really cute, and it's just a fun design. I love the huge legs and everything, so honestly, I'm changing my stance on it. I think this is a really fun build. It also has, like, these little thrusters out the back, I guess, to help the spider move, because I assume it's a mechanical spider. But yeah, this is definitely a really fun build. I like this a lot. And then the final side build in this set is this little mini spider drone. These are a ton of fun. They come in most of the sets this wave. However, this is one of the more unique variants. It has like this little like camera head on the top, which you can imagine is like a camera or like a turret or something. It's up to your imagination. And then on the back, it has this little like uh, minifigure head right here in trans lime green. And then a little like printed piece right here with a picture of a spider on it. You can assume like Venom is held in there. It's got six legs. It's got the big camera eye. I think this guy's fun. I like him. Here are the first three figures that are included in the set. We have Monkey Kid himself, we have Mei, and then we have Lou. I believe Lou is just like a generic civilian type character, but I'm not familiar with the Monkey Kid lore, so she might be an actual character. Regardless, let's take a look at these guys. So Monkey Kid's the same version that comes in most of like the newer Monkey Kid sets. It's very similar to his original version. He has a new undershirt now, and now he uses the wild style hood in like this blue color. It's a really cool update to his design. I didn't think the headphones looked great, and I think this hood looks a lot better. The hood is such a cool piece, and they don't use it nearly enough, so I'm glad to see it being used to Monkey Kid here. He comes with his little staff as always, and his legs are dual molded and side printed. They're like surprisingly really, really detailed. I like the jacket on with like the Monkey Kid face and like the little blue shirt underneath. It seems like he has a different face print in almost every set he's in, which is just fascinating. And this one, he's got like this big wide smile with this like red marking on his face, and his alternate face is very similar to like Cole's original face from Ninjago. May here, I believe, came in a set in the first wave in like her casual clothes, though she has an updated face print here. I'm very mixed on this face print here. On the one hand, it does show this character's personality, and I do like that a lot but on the other hand she doesn't have like a regular face and if you don't have one of the sets that she has a regular face in this face print is not very useful regardless though i like her hair with like the green printing on top of it and it's like very intricately detailed i love like the little two bobs at the top and how it like curves down at the back it's a really cool hair piece it's a nice one to get she also comes with this little gun right here that has like the ninjago dragon hilt in white which makes sense because she usually wields a sword using that dragon hilt so i guess that would be on her gun as well her jacket is really nice though. Again, I believe it already came in a set, but she's got like these two little dragons on the side and this like large uh, dragon necklace in the middle. And once again, that blue color is just being used all the time. And I think that looks really cool here. Lou is surprisingly detailed for a generic civilian, which is why I'm kind of doubting whether or not she's a generic civilian. But regardless, she's a nice figure. I like the pink undershirt with like the green jacket over top. She has like some metallic printing of like some triangles on the top of her torso, which is really cool. And yeah, I like the blue stripes. I like the pink undershirt. She looks good. And then her face prints really animated and detailed as well. She's got these like big purple glasses and then she's got like this angry face. And then her alternate face, her glasses are off. She's got this big wide smile. And then I love that back torso print with that heart in the middle and then you can see that pink undershirt again. 
such a cool figure. Like, genuinely, I'm surprised I like a generic civilian that much, but yeah, this one's really good. Oh, I guess I didn't show you May's alternate face here. Let me show you real quick. Her alternate face just has, like, a little visor over her eye, and, like, she's getting ready for battle. This makes sense when she's in her battle outfit, but in this outfit, it doesn't really make sense to me. So that's what I said about her not really having a generic face, right? Either she's winking and she's got her tongue out, or she's got this angry face with, like, the little glass over her eye. And in, like, this casual outfit, I don't really think that fits her, so I would have preferred if she just had, like, a generic smile or angry face on the other side. Really nice back torso print on her, at least. And there's how Monkey Kid's back torso print looks without the uh, hood on it. And then here are the final two minifigures included in this set. We have the Spider Queen and we have the Huntsman. The Spider Queen is in her, like, updated Season 2 design, and I absolutely adore this figure. The Spider Queen was already a cool aesthetic from her first design, but they just took it to a new extreme. They have this, like, green, like, poison to her torso, and it looks so good. She's got this, like, metallic spider print in the middle, and then she's got the purple skin, and then she's got dark purple on her dress, combined with the spider webs, combined with the lime green. Such a genuinely cool design. I also love her face print. She just looks like so evil with the bright green eyes and the smirk and the fangs coming out. I also really like her weapon piece here. It uses a uh, purple lightsaber blade, which I would have loved to get as a kid. I thought purple lightsabers were the rarest thing back then. And then at the top, she has like these two like larger knife pieces coming out. It's quite a large weapon, but I think it fits her with like her giant spider legs that come in the set. Oh, and how could I forget to mention her cape? Her cape is really cool. It's like a weird plastic. It's the same plastic they use in sales sometimes, and it's a bit weird to see it on a minifigure, especially with the Lego logo in the corner. I think that takes away from the design a little bit. However, it doesn't bother me too much, and I do like the overall design, just with the spider web and the little, like, intricate dots throughout. So cool. Like, genuinely just such an ominous and really cool-looking figure. The Huntsman comes in a few sets this way, but he looks really good. I like his, like, four spider eyes that, like, bright green and his angry face. This, like, uh, little neck attachment, I believe, came in a Marvel set originally, but it's cool to see it repurposed in gray here. He's got a little bit of lime green in his torso, similar to the Spider Queen, though hers is just, like, it pops so much more than his does. And I like his black jacket with the dark purple and how it continues into the legs and everything. He definitely does not feel like as nice of a figure when he's sitting next to the Spider Queen, who is an amazing figure, but they're definitely both quite nice looking. Here these two are with their accessories removed. And there's a look at their back torso prints as well as the Spider Queen's alternate face. The Spider Queen's back torso print is so cool. It feels like very alien to me, if that makes any sense. It feels just very like robotic and extraterrestrial to me, just like the shapes in it and everything. Obviously, I guess they're supposed to be spider webs, but it just feels so like... Yeah, extraterrestrial is the word to me. Like, I really like this mask on her alternate face, too. She's got the little, like, spider pincers and everything. I'm curious, like, what role that has in the Monkey Kid world, because I don't believe Season 2 is aired, but even if it has, I haven't seen, like, any of Monkey Kid yet, so I'm not sure, like, what the context behind it is. But definitely looks cool. I prefer her, like, full face shell because she looks more evil, but that's definitely a cool look for her. But yeah, as a whole, Spider Queen, genuinely just an amazing figure. I love that one so much. And then the Huntsman looks really good from the back. Definitely, like, following that up, it's hard to, but he's still a good-looking figure. I like I like the little purple fur and everything, and, like, the metallic spider on his back, and then he's got, like, that little pocket in the back. A really good-looking figure, it's just he's nothing compared to the Spider Queen, but the two do look good together. So, overall, would I recommend this set? <sighs> Here's the thing. I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm probably saying this in all my Monkey Kid reviews, but, like, I do like this set, but the price just isn't there for me. And the thing with the price is, like, it's the LEGO Store exclusive, so chances are it's never going to go on sale. And while price isn't everything in a LEGO set, price is really important to me, and this just doesn't feel like $80. While it's slightly bigger and has nice side builds, this is very comparable to, like, Zane's Mino Creature from Ninjago to me, and that set was 50 and this is, they're charging 80 for this. And the piece count is alright for the price, but just the volume of what you get and the fact that it's an unlicensed theme, I can't say I recommend it for that price. However, price, let's say you don't care about price, price aside, is the set good? I'd say it's pretty good. Obviously, as I said, my favorite part is by far the side build with the arcade. I think that's a ton of fun. The Lion Guardian itself, though, I do like. It's not necessarily my style, but I think the colors are really fun. I love the aesthetic to it, like all the little tentacle pieces and like the pearl gold mixed with like the painted gold. It's a lot of fun. It's also got a pretty nice minifigure selection, albeit not the best. I guess this is the cheapest way to get this variant of the Spider Queen, but that's not saying much when the cheapest way to get it is $80. I think it just boils down to, if you like the look of this set, you probably won't be disappointed. But yeah, this isn't one I'd recommend you, like, go out of your way to get. Like, it's good, and I don't think you'll be disappointed, but, like, for $80, there's probably better options out there. But, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know people don't always like when I talk about the price, but I'm sorry, that's important to me. Lego sent this to me, but, like, there's no way I'd be buying this for 80 if they didn't send it to me, so that's why I want to, like, let you guys know that, like, hey, the 
price is an important factor. But anyway, I'm on a tangent. Thank you everybody for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed, please press like and subscribe if you're new. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm doing reviews of all seven of the new 2021 March Monkey Kid sets. And a couple days ago, I did reviews of all five of the new March 2021 Ninjago sets. So if you liked the video, you'll help support me and the channel. And if you subscribe, you'll see those reviews as soon as they're posted. But I think that's about all I got to say. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.